All right, I am very excited to introduce my next guest. My next guest is a former Miami Dolphin great, pro bowler, Super Bowl, a judge, and just as important, an author of an awesome new book, Warrior Judge, Ed Newman, Holly Newman Greenberg, the author of the book. Welcome to the show. How are you? Very good. Hey. Very excited. Yeah. Very Thank excited. Well, us. yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. My, my first question, Holly, what was it like writing a, a, a you know a book with your dad? What was that process like? Yeah, I mean, what a dream, right? To have an opportunity to to really connect with a parent in that way and hear stories that were in the vault that yeah. I just never knew of. Um, you know, it was really important to me. I was very young when my dad retired from the NFL and, um, I just, I didn't, I knew that he was special and I knew that he had a really unique past, but I didn't, I didn't really understand the extent of it. And my dad is very humble. He doesn't really share stories unless he's asked to go into like, what was it like to be in a Super Bowl or what was it like playing with a Hall of Fame talent? He doesn't talk about it unless prompted. And because I was so little while he was in that stage of his life, I didn't know how to even engage with him around those questions. Um, but as I got older, I saw that there was a lot of stuff there and I I needed to know. So to answer your question, what was it like? I mean, it was absolutely amazing. It began with um, a series of one hour interviews, which were really cool because he was at yeah. the courthouse it was during his lunch break. It was once a week. And he would be, you know, he'd be eating lunch and talking to me. And then his bailiff, which was also his former teammate, Tony Nathan, would come in and I listened to them banter back and forth. And it was just, it was just really, really cool. And um, I learned a lot about him. And, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, we've been writing the book. It took us four years to write the book and one year to get it published. So it's been a very long process. But throughout each stage, um, it was really wonderful to partner with my dad and and engage with him in the way that he wanted to around the book. So at first he was my my subject and I was interviewing him, but later on he really rolled up his sleeves and dove into the material and became a co-author and a co-editor and felt very connected to the content. And um, I was lucky to have the time and the opportunity to, to to partner with him in that way and really create something with him that we're both very proud of. What I would have done to be a fly on the wall with those Tony yeah. Newman, and Newman uh, conversations. Yeah. Biggest thing that you found out about your dad that you didn't know, because you were, how old were you when, when he played? A little kid, right? Yeah, I was, yeah, I mean, I was, he, his last, I mean, it, his I was last, 34, 1985. Yeah, so you were yeah. really young. And I, I wasn't even, you know, I, I was born in 82. I, I he, ret you know, I, I was like, yeah, your baby. when I turned three, if, you know, yeah. like I was two years old. Um, so you asked the big, the biggest thing I learned. Sure. Oh my God. He told me so many things I didn't want to know. Well, we're going to get into it soon. <laughs> we, we, went, wanted to know. We, we went into, you know, all the stories I could think of. She would record yeah. them and transcribe them. 90% <laughs> of it ended up on the, on the, on the editing floor. And uh, we, yeah. we discovered that the, the stories could, could they create a storyline that there, there really was a, uh, um, challenges and adversaries and goals and you know getting get, getting them achieved and hard work a lot of hard work and then there was more yeah. hard work yeah. but dad yeah. like sorry, sorry to interrupt you but like i mean he was he was very comfortable sharing all the stories and okay. i mean some were very you know professional and you know trading and then the locker room and some were you know intimate details that you know it just changed the nature of the locker relationship guy stuff yeah yeah, but I mean, there's so you've read the book, so you know yeah. about the fart of consequence. I hope I'm talking yeah. about this on your podcast. Um, but so that I remember that day where my dad says to me, So there's, so, by the way, it all began with me having like 20 questions I wanted to go, 20 stories right. I wanted to get into. And this was not on my list. I had no clue about farting in that way. <laughs> and um, yeah, my dad basically starts the meeting and he goes, you know, there's something I want to talk to you about. And it's a little gross, um, but I think we should talk about this. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I have like my little recorder and I, I don't know where he's going. And I just start typing and I like the whole time I'm covering my face. I'm mortified that we are capturing this story, but it's really good. It's and a great it's story. Like, it's a great story. I have nothing left from a uh, NFL locker room. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's you know, these connect these competitive men and they are, 
you know, they're competitive about everything. And, yeah. you know, so that, that was kind of, that was shocking. And, um, you know, I mean, I would say the other thing that was, you know, pretty shocking is just, I, I knew he held the record as the strongest Miami Dolphin, but I didn't really understand what that meant. And, you know, while I was writing the book, I would go to my my workout class where I'd lift weights and I'd be lifting like 20 pounds, like, yeah, yes, yes. lifting 500 pounds and yeah. just this contrast. I'm like, he could do it. I can do it. <laughs> I'm sure he could. Yeah. Ed, Ed it's, it's an amazing story. So much I didn't know about you, but one of the things that you were a wrestler and a darn good one, huh? I was, I was, so you, uh, I was a national contender. So you went to Duke originally as a wrestler, right? Is that how I understood it? No. Um, I was recruited as a football player by all the schools. Wrestling didn't have that much uh, recruitment. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the, the, the Duke representative came and I actually talk about it in, in the book a little bit. Uh, I, I said, well, a lot of people have, have um, recruited me, but I, I would like to. You know, my secret sauce is being stronger than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I know how to do it. I'm a wrestler. I really love the sport and I love the competition. Can I wrestle it? And I made it stronger. I think it's a condition of going to school. I will have to wrestle with your approval. I'll pass it by the head coach. And they said, yes. Wow. Amazing. So, so everybody else went through off season conditioning, the weightlifting and that kind of thing. I had, I had an exception uh, and, and that used to have annoyed them. You need to come to the you know to the weight room. You'll get so much stronger. So they have a testing day, uh -huh. and I didn't do any weights. I'm like 70, 80 pounds stronger than everybody else at the Duke team. And they were like, God darn, gosh darn. <laughs> and a, you know, you're bad for morale. Get out of here. How did that functional weightlifting? I'm mean, sorry, wrestling uh, training help you as a football player? First, you have to have context. Back in, in 1973, there, there wasn't a lot of weight training. Right. All right. So there were a lot of natural athletes. You know, they were, they were farm strong. You know, they, that, that was their work. So, you know, I, I came uh, to the Dolphins and uh, I, I saw the real, you know, wrestling wasn't available to me. Actually, the, a little more, I, I, I tried out, excuse me, I, I offered my services as, as an assistant coach at uh, a local, you know, your local, F, FIU. Yeah. Went to FIU athletic department, gave him my credentials as a two-time all all conference wrestling heavyweight, and said, "I'll I, I will give you my time for free. I just want to spar with your with your with your guys. That's all I want to do. I just want to stay in shape. I'll do your calisthenics and I'll I'll give you yeah. everything I, I I can give you." The guy kind of left. He he he. he um, the heavyweight was intimidated, so I'm back at camp and I, I have to find an alternative. I, I'm, my secret was was being the strongest guy, and the alternative was the weight room. Uh, there were at that time, at most six Miami Dolphin players uh, that uh, had had uh, uh, um, you know weightlifting experience. So you know, wow, that is that blows my mind. Six we had no weight. We had no weight room. We had no. We had a universal machine, rusted out universal machine. No weight coach. Now to answer your, your, your other question is, is how does wrestling come into the, uh, it's, it affords you core strength like nothing else. Right. It gives you the ability to hand fight, especially offensive alignment. Yeah. You know, a guy's going to give you a, a head slap, you can block it. You can, you can come into it with a fist into the chest. And uh, those kinds of things are, are natural relations of, of, of wrestling. Center of balance, to be right. fully aware, quickness, you know, get the first jump on it. All of those things. And perhaps the best thing of all is injury resilience. You're, you're just, you're just tough as, as you're just tough. Yeah. You're just tougher the ability. And, and this is also a lot of it. I don't think I have the same threshold as ordinary people for pain, the same pain threshold. And I think wrestling had a lot to do with that. You, yeah. you learn there's a positive feedback. All right. It's a little bit of pain. I'm very sore. I'm more muscle bound. Three days later, I'm, feel like I'm you know, easily you know, beating that other opponent. The problem is in competition, it's mano a mano. The other guy's doing the same thing. So you got to do 10 times more. That's, that's really important. Important. What, what was coming out of Duke, you know, today they have the combine, right? And like, what was your draft process like? And then who drafted you? Was it George Young at that point or Monty Clark? 
the, the general manager was was Pat Tepler. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't remember who the, the director of player personnel uh, was. The twist, though, is, is, is my pathway was was a little unusual. Duke University had a, a, a football coach, Mike McGee. Uh-huh. He switched me from offensive guard to defensive tackle in my senior year. When we got to the postseason in my senior year, the scouts were coming. The NFL Combine was getting involved. Where do you think you should be, offense or defensive line? So I said, I, I think my temperament, I think my strength, I, I'd be best as an offensive lineman. They said, you know you're going to be drafted higher as a defensive tackle because they have film. You'll be, you'll, you're giving up a lot of money. I said, it's all right. Um, I, I think that's where I should be. I think I should be a lineman. I think I was right about that. And, and we, we came in. At the time, it was nearly an impossible thing. I, I'm so fortunate that I got with the Dolphins and that I was able to persevere. We, you're familiar that uh, Larry Little is a Hall of Fame player, and he was right. in the very beginning of his career. I sat watching that guy go out on, on uh, with the first team for four or five years. It was it was a long wait. I had to fool the coach Shula and the boy <laughs> getting cut. And I had to improve every year and be, be a, an asset to the team. And I should should give credit to Bob Kucherberg as well. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so he's a really, really tough uh, um, pair of, of fellas that uh, I had to I had to work to, 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 to get a starting spot. Never really did, actually, um, um, by beating out these, these uh, competitors. And this treatment also comes out in the book, you know, the in, in-house competitive. Uh, Bob Kuchenberg was versatile enough to be the left offensive tackle. And I started at, at the left guard when Wayne Moore was, was injured way back in 73, 74, 70, 75, about then. Larry Little had an injury later on in his career, and, and they said, okay, coach, you go back to left guard, Ed, go over to right, right guard. And here, here's the key. The team never missed a step. We, we kept on piling up the scores, and we kept on you know, pounding out, and, and that was a, a credential. Shula could trust me. Finally, he could trust me. He could finally trust you. What did you learn from just sitting behind those legends? Like, I know it was probably frustrating, right? You're a competitive guy. You want to get out there. But what did you learn from, I mean, you had multiple, uh, well, I mean, Cooch, I hope gets into the Hall of Fame, but uh, uh, Lager, uh, uh, Little, him, I mean, you had some real superstars there. What, what did you learn by sitting and being just patient with, with the process? I, I think the a, a little bit off your question, my competitiveness was just so great. I saw <laughs> their standard of play, and I said, you know, I look in the mirror, I go, what do you need to do to, to get this job? How do you catch Shula's attention? Yeah. So the thing that they did that was most impressive for me was just being great. They were a model, a standard to, you know, to try to live up to. What was it like playing for Shula, a legend? I'm very close. Well, he's passed away now, a couple of years, and uh, he was truly a great man. He was very difficult to um, um, deal with if it, it was contrary to the team, mm-hmm. but he was a friend on all other matters. He was a decent human being. Uh, he had high expectations, and he was very quick to be critical. Really, uh, and uh, um, you know, you, you could there was no slide. You know, there was no slide around him. You couldn't. You couldn't express your opinion it was a, a, a very military model uh, with his he being the you know the the, the five-star general with his uh, all his colonels you know, his assistant coaches he had a military we were we were privates the captains of the teams the larry littles of the team nick bonacani bob greasy they you know he would listen to them in a in a, in a meeting and, and all that um i treat coach shula the way i feel about him in the in the book is as very paternal, uh, really? um, you know, not in a cuddly way. Uh, he was, he <laughs> let go and, and he was, he had high expectations, you can be sure. And he wasn't easy about it. Uh, he, he, he let you know if, if he was unsatisfied with you. And he had a technique of, of um, have you heard the expression monkey in the barrel? Yeah. 
you didn't want to be the monkey in the barrel. <laughs> so that you know, he really tore into people. There was that's, people. That, that's what I've read over the years. Who was what, what player was always the monkey in the barrel? Like who who had a consistent like uh, stint in the barrel of your teammates? Oh gosh, I, they might be angry. Was at it me. Joe Rose? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I heard that very very early. Joe Rose, no. <laughs> he was he 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 had a, an incident with uh with 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 Coach Shula and uh, I don't I don't know if I should get into that you know he had a medical issue and he, and and the team wanted to uh, have him uh, uh, to 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 do surgery and he said yeah. no surgery so they made him sign a a, a, a no sue different uh, era man was and uh, yeah. it, was, it was it was Joe was was um, a solid player he was very very likable. Um, Bob Kuchenberg, when he was a young guy, really, he was in the barrel when he was very, very young, before he became a starter. Yeah. Tim Foley, I'm told, was in the barrel a lot. Used to, and when I say that, these were great players. Coach had, you know, he had the psychology. He said, mm -hmm. I can get Ed to do things by yelling at him, but he does better with a pat in the back. Good job, Ed. I. Right. I would die for a compliment. I would, I would literally give up my life. Others, it takes a little criticism. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you hammer them a little bit. We had a guy named uh, uh, he was he was traded from uh, Baltimore. Um, what Drugis? was his name? Drugis? Tom Drugus, right? Tom yeah. Drugus. Tom Drugus uh, uh, was thrown into a game because a right tackle uh, couldn't make it. We lost the game, and and he had a very bad day on account of a separated shoulder. Mm -hmm. They threw him in before he was really full, fully ready to play. I never heard a guy. He, he spent about seven minutes just going, "You are so terrible. We tried to trade you. Nobody would have you. You're nothing but a liability." Just going on and on. He, he was riffing for for five or six minutes, and I was. I went to the chair and the right. desk, and I'm moving away from Tom Jurga because <laughs> he was my friend. Yeah, were roommates. Yes, oh, man. we were roommates. Uh, he comes back at, uh, at the end of the season. A lot of coaches would let us have a um, you know, after season kind of interview. He said, "Why don't we just you know trade me?" No, you know, you, yeah. you remember that day? Just trade me. He tells me as my as my roommate. He's telling me that. You know, Tom, you're going to be you know, as much right to earn the starting position or a position on the team as anybody. Uh, I have the, every confidence you'll come in in top shape. So Tom came in. That's what Chula said to him. That's what Chula, That's what Chula, said, Chula said to him. After he life. was in top shape. Yeah, and then he caught, they caught him in about, in about <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> Chula was ruthless, man. He was ruthless. That, that was a, a, a – he could be ruthless. I remember he did things – there was a guy, there was a rookie that uh, was, oh, came okay. to, he wasn't that good. No, it, it wasn't It wasn't him. It was just some, some rookie, and he was late. Here's my wife. Yes. Right? <laughs> was, he, he, he was late to his, you know, one of the, um, the, the we had to go on the practice field for some, yes. some testing. He said, you're cut. He just cut him right there on the field. Just like that. You're late. You're cut. Before you go, do the, there was something we had the twelve minute run. I, I was going to ask you about the twelve minute run. Go run. Go run the twelve minute run. He 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 ran it. He, he ran it. Okay. <laughs> That's right. He mom. ran the twelve minute run, and he did such a great job. This guy, he ran a twelve minute. Did such a great job. Our fastest uh, teammate was for the twelve minutes. The most distance uh, covered was Dick Anderson. Oh really? I didn't know that. Okay. So how did you do that twelve minute run? It's 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 famous. It's famous. The famous. So he time. tells this rookie, I, "I want you to uh, run a second time, another twelve minutes, so you can you can you can." And then as soon as he does that, he says, "Okay, get out of here. You're, you're fired." Wow. <laughs> he ran that it twice, <laughs> and we're going, "Whoa, whoa!" Uh, here, here's another one. We're, we're, we're sitting on the field. South Florida sometimes gets temptu temptu temptuous um, yes. weather storm, storm clouds and all that stuff. The lightning bolt, he's 
this is, I think, treated in the, in the book as well. He's standing like, like Ahab, looking at you know, the whale. <laughs> you know, he, he, he's, Coach, don't you think that this guy, Allen, George Allen, I don't know George Allen, uh, Allen, there was Bob Allen. Bob Allen was the um, uh, film. Yeah. He had regular 16 millimeter film. And he, I got to get down from the from the um, from the elevator. You know, he was on a, yeah. a a stage that was you know, take the film from a, from a from a height from an altitude. You stay up there. Anybody could you know can do that job. You know, not everybody can do it when it's raining out. Come on. And he was telling us we're hitting the deck, so we're getting lower than worms. You know, so the lightning won't hit us. Just an intense uh, guy, huh? Just he was yeah, yeah, you're right, a general, and you guys are the troops, and. My way or the highway, kind of a thing. He was. He, <laughs> it would not work always, today. I mean, he was always <laughs> consistent. He was. He was reliable, and he to the man. Everybody at the end of the day, they said he did a good job, and you know his idiosyncratic things. You can see you suffer that. All right, we're in the Super Bowl again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it 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 worked. It absolutely worked. So you know, speaking on leadership, I mean, you slowly. How did you slowly become? You know, the the, the team lawyer. You were you were the player rep. And did did they vote you in, or you just volunteered? You found it interesting. Like, walk me through what got you there as a player rep. Again, context. The NFL Players Association wasn't anywhere as as powerful it is as it is today. Right. People like Vince Lombardi, when the union came out, if you were the rep and and you were you were cut. It was a it was a serious disadvantage to be a player rep. Uh, yeah. People knew me in the locker room, so when we had our, our first um, union strike, they said, Ed, would you like to do it? Yeah, sure, sure. Why not? And I crossed my fingers. I hope I don't get cut. <laughs> I spoke with Coach Shula a little bit about it. He said I, I would never separate the two, but uh, he was not a player's. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. When the strikes happened uh, and all that, he he was he was rabid about it. He was so upset that you know yeah. we lost another opportunity to get to another win. Or yeah. you know, he he was he was upset about that. Difficult. It was intimidating. There's another story, in the, and I don't know if he got if this one made the book. Um, he had a, a, a gathering of um, the leaders on the team, and he's asking us to. Uh, um, please stand down and become an example yeah. for the rest of the league and cross the picket line. Yeah, right? it's in there. Yeah. So everybody's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, turned to like that Super coach. Bowl, Super Bowl caliber team. Yeah. I, I yeah. said to him, I said, coach, I have a question for you. I saw in the newspaper that your contract with Joe Robbie is up. Do you have an agent to shop your services to any team in the league? He heard that question, and I asked it in front of all the other players. Wow. He gave me a stare and yelled at me. He screamed, started screaming about, this is nothing to compare. You're a player. You know what you're getting into. Yeah. That, that kind of stuff. I said, Coach, there's a greater principle. Everybody should have the right to market their services. For sure. And, in fact, they're, they do have a right. They're yeah, of course they do. Under the antitrust right, under, under the antitrust laws. So that that's changed. I, I I can't believe how how well off the players are now. I don't have any resentment about that. Though. No, not only the NFL players, the college kids. <laughs> Isn't all, that amazing? You know, it's, it's, that's spinning my head. Well, it's it's only a matter of time before they get the the TV money as well, and and they should they should get a piece of it. They're the ones out there, you know, uh, you know, busting their butts to 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 win ball games. So, but anyways, so when when. Is this when your sort of interest in, you know, becoming a lawyer started or was it something that you had before that? Um, was this what drove you? Again, context. I'm sorry for being, for doing that. I was always driven to, to try to succeed. I was unsure about what to do. I had opened up. I'd gone to business. I had a, 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 an open invitation to go into my father's business. He was in a radiator business, manufacturer and repair. And that that happened. I got my real estate sales and broker licenses. And each year I was frustrated. I really couldn't get any footing you know, for a future career, a plan B. So what, what Holly and I, uh, call, it was a plan B. 
So uh, it, it was very frustrating. And uh, um, over um, some meetings with, with friends, family, there's a, a, a now, pres now presently retired Judge Michael Jandon mm -hmm. and my uh, brother-in-law, Andrew Lineoff, we had a meeting and uh, just casually talking about how's life. And I, I happened to mention, I, I wish I had a plan B. I wish I had something that I could really start. And Andy says, look at what you're reading. Look at what you're doing. You're going to school. You're, you're leading all these people in the, in helping somewhat. And you're yeah. the only one that knows about antitrust in the locker room. Right. You already have some, some skills and you already have some, some advantages. Uh, and I, I think I can get you an interview at the Dean of Admissions at, at, at law. At the time, I thought he was kidding. I, I, you're joking. I, I know you're joking. Yeah. Just stop with the bullshit. Yeah. So I mean, he wasn't stopping. And, and to his credit, he, he kept on um, pushing. And as a lark, I said, sure, I'll do it. You know, that, that's how it was. Some years earlier, this is deep background now. Some years earlier, I went to the director of publicity for the Dolphins and said, I'd like to be a spokesman for a major uh, um, charity. And uh, it, we ended up with the South Florida Blood Service. And for free, just just humanitarian stuff, I, I did a lot of work with them and raised consciousness in, in Florida, a lot of PA, public service uh, um, announcements and all that stuff. And um, it ultimately led to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of annual blood donations every year. Uh, and uh, it, it meant a lot. Um, they... A lot of things spun spun off from that. I'm trying to cut it short. Now I'm in in, in the dean's office, and one of the one of one of the students, uh, the law students, I'm in the office waiting to meet Dean Hausler, Jeanette Hausler, and I never met her before. He says to me, "You're Ed Newman, aren't you?" Yes. And Dean Hausler's watching this. I don't even know she's watching it. Yeah. So, it's amazing what you're doing for the South Florida Blood Service. This is really an incredible thing. So I, I didn't have to introduce myself to Dean Hauser. She already was, you know, oh, we have a, a dolphin. This is good for the school. Yeah. So she laid out the academic threshold. She says, okay, your Duke credentials are perfectly okay. Just got to pass the, uh, the, the, um, the, this, our threshold for the, uh, the law boards. And, and I, I, I crushed the exam because I, yeah. I want to do things. Like I work really hard. Right. Um, and that, that's, how that story developed. now as i understand it from the book shula wasn't a big fan of you going back to law school right shula was pr only prioritized the football yeah and of course he's thinking that's got to hurt his stamina that's got to hurt his sure dedication or his, his concentration or any number of things who knows what he was saying but to demonstrate how great a man he was he immediately, without blinking an eye, said, that's a wonderful thing. You have my full blessing. I'm really happy you're doing something to take care of a career after football. But you have to understand my position. I'm the head coach here, and a lot of people are relying on you to make it through the year. Wow. We have, it, we have to come to an understanding, or I'm not going to be able to work with you. What is a coach? If I see you're letting down, you're, you're not able to compete. You're, you're not able to compete at the level that you, you know, I was, you know, that's the punchline. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to take a, a leave of absence from law school. Wow. I shook his hand and said, yes, that's fine. That's acceptable. So, Strikes me as a guy like you, that's an extra challenge, right? You knew there was a challenge of playing football, going to law school. Now that this man who you love challenge you it probably pushed you harder i was a four-time pro bowler i was the i went to the pro bowl but yeah. there is one pro bowl where you're the, you're the top guard in the league and that was that year that year wow. the first year i was the top offensive lineman right guard for the year and as i understand it you went to the super bowl and then took a, a, a finals exam that's correct so the finals exam was right after the super bowl no um again details uh, I don't know. I knew my team was great, and uh, I'm having interviews with with uh, Jeanette Hausler. And yes, it's great. It's coming. As I need to tell you, there is an outside 
possibility that it, that the Dolphins will go to the Super Bowl. It happens right over the testing period. <laughs> she said, well, that's nothing to worry about, but it certainly is a good excuse. And we'll, <laughs> we'll address that when it happens, if it happens. And it happened. So I knock on the door. Dean Hausler, it's happened. We need to make arrangements. I'll take the exam after the Super Bowl, <clears throat> if it's okay with you. She said, it's okay with me to, for you to take the exam next week. <laughs> uh, it was like a week before I went to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to the Super Bowl game. The uh, law school formats, they give you a blue book to write essays in, and you, know, they give you, and you have a pencil and your name and all that stuff. Inside the book, oh, there's, there's a detail I forgot to um, I mentioned. I said, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my professor that, uh, uh, not to be upset, I'll have, um, I'll, I'll, I'm making arrangements. She says, oh, no, 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 no. Um, the University of Miami has a blind grading system. He, he can't know that, that, you're, that you're the one that's taking the test at a different time. No, that can't happen. So back to, to Dean Hausler. You come to my office this day for the test, and we'll give you a, a quiet area, and we'll, and we'll let you take the test. So I take the test, and I, I open the blue, you know, the blue book and the question and all that stuff. And in there, there's a slip of that note from the professor. He says, "Of course, it's you, Ed. Everybody, anybody with half a brain would know it's you. Yeah. And I, you do fine. Good luck in the Super Bowl." It was a, a, a nice way to take a test. That's that's awesome. So I don't think that ever happened before. <laughs> yeah, it was the worst kept secret of who was taking this test. The, uh, it brings me that Super Bowl. That was a magical year. You were there for the beginning of what turned out to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Dan Marino. Are the stories true that just very early on, you guys go, this this kid's got it, whatever it is, it's got it. Was he that magical? A lot of people talk. Right, and I'm an offensive lineman, and most of the time, my my back, the back of my head is looking at, at Marino. I saw him yeah. on the films, and I, oh, that's a good pass. That's a good pass, but you don't know the greatness until you start seeing a string of the of the, the stats start yeah. really getting getting big. And we knew that about halfway through the season. I mean, this was, you know, a, a new quarterback. It's hard to defend him. You don't you don't have a book how to defend him. Yeah, but um, by that time. There, another thing happened. We were an excellent line. Yeah. Mark Duper, Mark Clayton, they were just, you know, all world and uh, would run under everything. And they started competing against each other. You know, they would go to Coach Shula, you got to throw me the ball more. I'm the one. I'm the one. So they <laughs> were the most competitive that you can imagine. And really a good thing for the team. The, the, so you played next to another Hall of Famer and a great, Dwight Stevenson. How good was he? I mean, just those big, strong arms. I mean, he was quick. He's a, he's a monster. Dwight, Dwight had amazing technique skills. He could use jujitsu moves and flop you on your face or flip you on your back, and you wouldn't even know it. He, he was a master of center of, of gravity. He had very, very quick feet. He almost had an eyes in, on the back of his head. I remember him stepping over backwards, stepping over people that were behind him as he was fighting on the onslaught. He was um, all all business, all you know, really tough, really tough, dedicated and focused. Yeah, really, it's, a shame, it's a shame he got hurt because he was so talented uh, and so gifted. But and one, that, other, yeah, but one of your other teammates, and and the story in your book is is fascinating. A guy that you blocked for, and then I guess later on he blocked for you was Tony Nathan. How did that all come to be? He, you, you go on, you you you're, you become a judge. I'd love to hear about that. And then Tony becomes your bailiff. See, you're, you're all getting teasers on uh, on the book. It's a it's a wonderful it's a wonderful story. Um, there's so much more in this thing. This book. <laughs> it's there is so much more. Um, Tony was in the NFL for um, I don't know nine years. I think ten years. I, I don't don't quote me on that one, but. Uh, he had a good reputation, and he was a, a very decent man. He had a lot of, of connections. So he found other player and coaches that, that would hire him on. And he, I, I, whether he, did, he went through college coaching for a while, and then into the NFL. Uh, he coached for a while. So he, he, he did that for a long, long time. 
his last job, if I'm not mistaken, was in San Francisco. Yeah, I think so. And and somebody, um, his, his his recruiting uh, coach, the head coach, was fired, and he had no juice, you know, for for the the new administration. So I'm I'm watching this. I had a campaign event of a, a local cigar factory of, of some kind, and I invited him and a number of other players. And afterwards, we said, "Let's go to um, um, what was the name of um, that place on Southwest Eighth Street? Uh, the, the you know the restaurant uh, that they all go to." Versailles? I can't Versailles, right? And <laughs> yeah. we, 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 well, if you're running for any politics, you go yeah. there. All the Cubans are there. Yeah. We, we went there. We went there, and, and I, I was talking with with Tony and saying, "Listen, my bailiff just informed me his name was Mitch Perez that he's got a family and he and he needed to have um, a different job. He needed to go to a different a different uh, employer, and it was imminent. He says they were on a, a hiring freeze for Mitch." until you know the budget allowed yeah. so he says any time i could be called away he says, i'll give you a couple of weeks before that happens so it happened the first the general one i mentioned it to, to tony uh yeah yeah that'd be interested that'd be great he, he didn't it was like i had the same reaction as uh, would you like to be a lawyer <laughs> right it was it was ditto you want me to be a bailiff i don't know how to spell bailiff so and he didn't know what um, what to expect out of that, but I found the you know, the way to you know to entice him. Uh, we were together for about twelve years uh, because his wife. We called his wife and said, "This is a great job," and I made I made a um, and she said, "Tony, why don't you try it out?" So and the rest was history. He did like it. It, it, it really was a, a, a very very good relationship, and I had a very good time with. Uh, him, my buddy, we we um, worked quite well together, and we, we used to banter about the Dolphins I, I during the football been season. There lunchtime, you two talking about the old times, the new regime. I mean, it would have been great. It, it really was. And Other than the, I don't want to be in your courtroom, I never want to be in your. Courtroom. <laughs> that, that, that I don't want to be a part of. We were known as the Dolphin Division. It, it was. It didn't hurt any any of our marketing or, or our presence. Uh, Did anybody? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure you sentenced fans, right? I mean, there was probably people who asked you for their autograph as sentencing. <laughs> I it's happened. <laughs> I won't say no. I said, you're kidding, right? I'm, I'm, uh, you're going to have my autograph on your judgment. Yeah, <laughs> it might be not, not guilty. I don't know. I have to presume yeah. that really? you're innocent. Oh. Holly, question, like, yeah. what do you want people to take from the book or learn? I mean, your father's had an amazing life. I'm, I'm sure you going down memory lane and memorializing his just all these awesome things that he's done. He's a renaissance man. What, what would you like for people to learn or, or, or take away from the book? I mean, I, I just want people to feel happy when they read it. You know, I mean, there's just a lot of love in the story and there's a lot of depth in the story. And you know, my dad's life is very interesting and he overcame a lot of adversity yep. from injuries and cancer, multiple bouts of cancer. Um, he had such a strong connection with his father and clearly I have a very strong connection with my dad and my kids. And there's just some really beautiful cycles in the story. And I just want people to like, yeah, find inspiration in his story. If they're dealing with something challenging, know that like you'll get through it. Just, you know, stay focused, work hard. You can overcome whatever the challenge is. Um, and also just, you know, a lot of a lot of the gentlemen in the story have are, are amazing, incredible people. And sadly, they've passed away um, so, too early. And, um, you know, like I just I love bringing them back on the pages. I love their yeah. story being out there for others to read. And, you know, sure, it's my dad's story from cover to cover, but it's really it's 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 their story. There's so much of them in this story. Um, so I just yeah, I want to touch a lot of people. Um, and inspire people. I don't. Right. I don't think other sports books, uh, books of this genre, they don't have the subjectivity that that. Uh, not even close. Not. It's pretty much a factual, you know, yeah. superhero stuff. This is really, uh, you know, what's happening in your gut. What are you smelling? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? You know. So there is Plan B. That's important. There's adversity. Getting over it. Uh, obstacles, um, competitors, p 
Hey, I mean, you're a resilient guy. I mean, that's one of the big things I took away from is that, uh, you know, from Coach Shula challenging you and all of a sudden it's the best season of your career to the injuries and the setbacks and, you know, having to sit behind two legends. I mean, how many people get drafted and all of a sudden they're sitting by mul behind multiple Hall of Famers and say, hey, kid, you wait, and then you go on. You know, a lot of people would quit, right? Um, the fact that, you know, you – grit and grind through it uh, is, is a testament to, to you. And it's, I mean, as a dolphin fan, and then just a guy who followed your career was very, very inspirational. A lot of luck. Things could have been very different. And even on this book, I'm lucky to have Holly. I want to give her praise before this is over. Uh, yes, I made my contributions. I lived this and I dictated the, uh, you know, the storylines, but the, the bulk of the work and the editing and the public relations and, and uh, agency that, that, that Holly brings is, is, is amazing. We amazing. did have a little bit of a conflict in the making of the book. Uh, that you know, She, she <laughs> started to shift into her voice. I said, well, he's my hero, right? He's your hero. I mean, she was no, very, she, I look at that guy who yeah. this earth. <laughs> you, you can't have a, a, a like a feminine voice and warrior judge. It has to be, <laughs> you have to have to you know kind of. You have to be a little firm, a little strong. Uh, and, uh, got a few exclamation points. And, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right, I got to go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I go got ahead. a couple rapid fire questions. I know you're a busy guy, but before I go, Holly, I have a very important question. Okay. What was it, what was it like dating growing up? And I hear me out. Oh. NFL <laughs> football player. He's a wrestler, so he can also handle himself. He's and then he's the strong, the strong arm of the law as a judge. Yeah. I, I think it was a lot worse for the guys. And it needed like they it was all in their heads. He was a teddy bear, although I'm not sure if he had any conversations, you know, that I wasn't aware of. But he was yeah, they knew. Mom. They knew. it was my mom that they needed to be scared of. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm kind of a slow, slow burning fuse. Uh, <laughs> but then but when you snap, I, I don't want to be I around. Told you, the man. boys, my my two sons in law, that they better take care of my girls. Yeah. Yeah. And sure, they've they've, sure. they've held up their part of the bargain. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. couple of rapid fire questions. You ready? Yeah. All right. You know of the curse of Joe Robbie, right? The Joe Robbie or what Hard Rock Stadium is built on ancient tribal burial ground. Do you believe in it or not? Because we have not had a whole lot of luck since we moved there. Wow. I don't believe in it because I'm very rational. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I can't I can't say that. That, that's it's been a series of bad drafts and picks and you know whatnot. It's, it's that's Don Shula is what's missing. It's not our stadium. No, you're right. Location. You know, that, it's that. <laughs> Don Shula. No, you're 100 percent right. All right. Um, best advice you ever received from a coach. Although I got to give credit to to to, to McDaniel's. It, I like it, him. I like him too. He's a little quirky. Yeah. And he knows he. And I'm not saying anything bad. He probably knows him more than anybody. So I think the Dolphins are a very exciting team. And this this last year's edition was an amazing, amazing for the fans. Yeah. And uh, I think that if they, they shouldn't give up. They should really yeah. double down. Uh, there was a um, similar situation when the Dolphins in Super Bowl VI lost to Dallas. I was at Duke at the time. But they, they got together and, and um, they just committed themselves to win the Super Bowl VII, the perfect season. I and me. I was, you know, I was so lucky to be the second back-to-back -back Super Bowl as a as a rookie. So. We need another one, my man. We need another one. All right, best it's advice. Think, you ever got think about it. In nineteen, it was nineteen eighty four season. That's I a know. long time I was a kid. ago. I was a kid. A long time ago. With the Dolphins are due just on the on the on the roulette wheel. Just when your number comes up, you would think, right? This is why. This is why some people give you know some credence to the curse. <laughs> the Red Sox had it. The Cubs had it. We're going to break it. We're going to break it. All um, right. The, uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Most underrated player you ever played with? You know, I would have said Joe Klecko, but he was just nominated to the Hall of Fame. He just got in in the Hall of Fame. It, it was awesome. Great. That was pretty good. I can almost say that he probably was. John Hanna is also just. An offensive guard. He was just fantastic, a, a really amazing uh, um, representative. Um, Munoz, you know, yeah. is also that that tackle from that era. Uh, other people, guys that you don't think got their due. 
where they're great, but maybe, you know, don't get the press that some of the other greats get. Nat Moore, I think, is, is um, Nat Nor Nat underrated. Nat was special. He was special. He really, he really was a great athlete. I, I would say Nat Moore. Yeah. Who's the toughest guy uh, for you to Don Don, Don uh, Strzok also deserves a lot more credit. Don He's Strzok. underrated. He was um, like a coach, right? I mean, like he, he was a coach on the field. That's what I've always heard. He was a great coach. He really was. I'm going to go for a, a diabetes, cure of diabetes golf tournament for him in a couple of weeks. There you go. Good, good, good stuff. All right. Toughest guy for you to block? That would be Klecko. Why? He was oh. just a beast, huh? Him, Marty Lyons, Gastonov, that whole offensive line you had to go up against twice a year. Well, I, 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 I had lesser opponents that weren't that difficult for me. I mean, yeah, there was, it was a, it's, a, it's a boxing match. You talk about it. You pushing around 300 men. No, it wasn't that difficult. <laughs> the only one that, that, you know, you look across, and he never could beat me, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't, a, you know, like, like a, a comfortable experience. <laughs> yeah, it was 100% right. of, of, of effort. It, was, it really was. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. Hardest hit you ever delivered. Manny Fernandez deserves more credit too. Manny and, Fernandez does because were those were great teams. He's he, you, you talk a lot about him in your book, but I mean he he was a stud, and I don't think the average NFL fan even knows about him. He he was great. He, he I mentioned he should have been the MVP. They talked about him being the MVP for the Super Bowl. Uh, he had a phenomenal day, and uh, he he was a phenomenal uh, presence on the team. No, yeah, he's de de definitely those teams were were absolutely loaded. Okay, one more. Question, and I'll let you go. How would you describe your playing style in one word? Powerful. <laughs> That's probably the word I would think. Explosive, so. explosive, powerful. I was very quick and I was very strong. Awesome. Ed, Holly, thank you so much for your time. Everyone, get on Amazon right now. Buy this book, Warrior Judge. It's awesome. I, I read it. If you're a Dolphin fan, you're going to love it. There's so much more in this book than we highlighted today. Um, an amazing life, amazing career. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best, my friend. Thank you for coming on the show. And Holly, thanks for setting this up. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank Let me you. thank you for, for, for uh, enduring us. That was very nice. I had a blast. You kidding me? That's a joy. I mean, you got to really experience, Dan, what it was like for me to interview my dad. He's just, he's so engaging. He has so many stories. And I mean, his memory is incredible. He could just, you know, talk for hours and just bring you back to it. I, I add one question for you. I, Let's I, do it. You know, just so how did you even come up on the book? How did you find it? And a couple of things. Number one, I'm a huge dolphin nerd. So I've read, I don't know how many different dolphin books in my life. I'm a season ticket holder. You know, you get it growing up here in Miami. Um, I, I heard it on the Joe Rose show. So you oh. went on the Joe Rose show a couple of weeks ago and I was like, of course I'm going to buy this book. And I went on and then that's how we got connected uh, yeah, listen, I love, I love these stories. Like I said, I could listen to Ed talk all day about, you know, behind the scenes, uh, NFL and dolphin stuff. So, um, I know I have recommended the book to a bunch, uh, our listeners, lots of dolphin fans, heavy South Florida based listening, uh, group. So, uh, guys, so thank rush you out. For that. yeah, thank rush you. out. By the book. We're, we're like in a cave. We don't know. There's no light. What's happening. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just and Amazon doesn't give you a lot of feedback how the sales are. We're relying Don't. on the reviews. Yeah. The reviews, yeah. I'll, I'll write a review today. I'll, I'll actually write Thank a review you. today. And uh, on my LinkedIn post, I'm, I got one coming up uh, like in a week or two. I, I wrote it. I have a big well, Thank you. It'll be cool. For the interview and, and for the review. Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys. Have a great day. Yeah. Okay. You too. You too. Take care. You too. Right. Look forward to seeing you.